OK, we're going to quickly talk about the Republican Party. And um, I said previously about the Democrats are quite broadly split between the uh, the centrists, the uh, the right and the progressives. Um, but we can say similar thing. What well, we, we can't say similar thing, actually, about the Republican Party. I think it, the analysis is that uh, the Republicans are now uh, a Trump party. I mean, there's a former uh, representative, uh, Denver Riggleman, who left the party very recently. And he's argued that uh, the GOP has reared away, veered away from the conservative principles that he believes in towards a conspiracy theory and cult of personality devoted to President Trump. And that is pretty true. I mean, the Republican Party have now turned into something grotesque compared to what it was as a, as a sort of middle of the road conservative party. Um, uh, in particular, he called the January the 6th assault on the Capitol as an attempted coup. Trump calls the shots now in the party uh, with a broad based support and his refusal to accept the result of the election. Even those who were critical in the in the two houses over the January the 6th um, um, uh, insurrection, uh, they've now they've now fallen in line and, and accept his uh, his uh, his his effective leadership over the over the Republicans. He's also the kingmaker. Every Republican nominee uh, that wants to be nominated uh, has to first get approval or at least show that they agree with Donald Trump. So the Republican nominee for Pennsylvania, Doug Mastriano, um, uh, uh, who won the governorship, um, won on the strength of his support for uh, Donald Trump and his effort to subvert and overturn the 2020 presidential election. In fact, uh, um, Governor Mastriano uh, attended the Stop the Steal rally on January the 6th. Uh, and he, he continues to accuse the Democrats of fraud. There are hundreds of Republican candidates in primary races across the country who have embraced Trump's false claims about this defeat. Uh, and as a result, moderates such as um, Liz Cheney have been pushed out or marginalised within the party. Uh, Liz Cheney was one of t uh, one of few Republicans who voted to impeach Mr. Trump last January and her decision to take part in the House investigation, which is currently underway, just started yesterday, in fact, uh, of the attack on the Capitol on January 6th, has forced her into a kind of exile from the Wyoming's Republican Party apparatus in a state where Mr. Trump won 70 percent of the vote in 2020, the highest percentage in the country. Um, She's basically got a problem. She, whether she's going to be renominated is is a big debate. Uh, she's now um, uh, forced into exile. Her 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 party in Wyoming um, uh, have uh, have censured her. They don't want to see her anymore. She's basically, you know, alone in uh, in uh, in in her constituency. She hasn't actually been seen for the last year in any big major Republican event anywhere in in the. In, in Wyoming. Um, uh, added to that, uh, Liz Cheney faces a well-known primary opponent who has been endorsed by Mr. Trump and the state Republican Party. Uh, last summer, Mr. Trump and his allies uh, uh, recruited and vetted candidates to oppose Cheney. Uh, they ended up choosing Harriet H Hagerman. Uh, they are pushing her out of the party, in other words, right? Uh, Liz Cheney said our party has to choose. We can either be loyal to Donald Trump or we can be loyal to the Constitution, but we cannot be both. So she's basically said that the Republican Party now is a threat to the Constitution. Right. Um, she was previously removed as conference chair of the Republicans. Um, uh, you know, her 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 previous um, colleague, uh, Lindsey Graham, who's a very strong Trump supporter, said on Fox's Sean Hannity show uh, that the people who try to erase Trump are going to wind up getting erased. Um, so now we've got a, a cult of leadership within the Republican Party. Donald Trump runs. That. That's very rare. Ex-presidents tend to go away. They don't tend to come back and and uh, and, and uh, interfere in, in politics. And, and yet uh, the Republican Party is very much now a Trump-only party. Um, 
Uh, Liz Cheney is uh, is one of two Republicans who are on this committee, this uh, uh, hearings that are taking place at the moment. Uh, and uh, she uh, she is almost certainly going to lose her seat. I mean, there was some analysis about Democrats in the primary. So in, in her constituency, in her state, uh, there is a um, uh, 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 there is they've got the most liberal laws, in fact, regarding uh, primaries. So Democrats can and, and uh, uh, yeah, Democrats can um, uh, for a day or two can switch to being Republicans and then can vote for within the Republican primary. So in effect, what she's counting on is Democrats uh, who realise that she is probably uh, an important asset in the same way Joe Manchin is an important Republican asset, you can say, in the Democrats, where Liz Cheney is probably quite an important Democrat asset uh, in the Republican Party. And so she's relying on Democrat voters um, in those primaries. So Republican ideology is now to the far right on a number of issues, but it's it's got a strong base in the, in old America, in those central parts of America, the old Rust Belt, uh, the old Christian Bible Belt. Uh, it has a lot of support there. Uh, many of Trump's supporters uh, subscribe to a white nativist conspiracy theory, like the Great Replacement theory. This is the idea that. Um, the reason why the Democrats want to introduce migration or uh, have no problem with mass migration is because they want to water down the white population and continue to win elections forever. This is what um, uh, this is what uh, motivated uh, the 18 year old who who uh, in Buffalo uh, who killed people in the supermarket. Right. The white uh, the great replacement theory. And many uh, uh, Republican supporters uh, now subscribe to this theory. What's happening is you've got this base that are no longer accepting politicians uh, who, who differ with them. Uh, and so the old moderate uh, politicians, you know, if you think about, um, you know, even even if you go back five years before pre-Trump, the Republican Party used to be a broad church. I mean, you had John McCain, for example, who was regarded as being you know, a fairly centrist uh, Republican um, uh, and, and, and others. Now, these, these members are now being marginalised or pushed out or, or further marginalised by, uh, by Trump supporters and by the party machinery. Um, and so it, it's the, the stage is set for Donald Trump to win the next election. And I suspect he will do unless this committee, uh, the House uh, Select Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection uh, says otherwise. So yesterday on primetime TV, I mean, they've hired Hollywood directors, by the way, to to um, to get the message out. But on primetime TV, this he these hearings have started. Now, you can almost compare this to the Watergate hearings uh, of, of Richard Nixon. Uh, in fact, some have compared it to the Watergate hearings where the House Select Committee unearthed what actually went on. And as the hearings continued, it became very clear that Richard Nixon was in the firing line. So he resigned before more could come out in the public. Right now, of course, Donald Trump is no longer president, but I suspect what they intend to do is they intend to try to get to a stage where they uh, they forbid Donald Trump from becoming president for standing as a nominee. <coughs> so there are seven Democrats and two Republicans. Uh, who are now shunned by their own party, who sit on the panel uh, and are pulling out all the stops in an attempt to uh, seize the public's attention. This week, the Justice Department charged the national chairman of the Proud Boys, which was the one of the uh, organisers behind the January the 6th interaction, Enrique Tarrio, and four of the group's other leaders with seditious, seditious conspiracy. In fact, I read that one of the nominees for one of the uh, for, for the Republicans somewhere, I can't remember where, has also been arrested uh, just last night. So over the course of the month, the committee intends to present findings that Trump helped spur efforts to overturn his loss in the 2020 election and contributed to the attack on the Capitol that briefly disrupted the peaceful transfer of power to President Joe Biden. Um, uh, this is, uh, is a, it's an extraordinary event, right? And it may lead to 
you know, it may lead to. Uh, I don't know how much Trump supporters are actually going to be impacted by it. I mean, Fox are not, for example, Fox News is not uh, running. I mean, most of the of the networks are um, are showing uh, the committee hearings live. It's on primetime TV, but Fox isn't. Uh, but that just shows the polarization, I think, that exists within uh, the United States, right? Um, I'm going to say la a last thing then about uh, the National Rifle Association as an interest group. The NRA is now among the most powerful special interest groups in the US with substantial budgets to influence members of Congress on gun policy. It is run by uh, Wayne Lapierre. Uh, the NRA supported Trump's efforts to get elected. The NRA reportedly donated 30 million to his 2016 campaign making them one of his biggest supporters, if not the biggest. The NRA now lobbies heavily against all forms of gun control and argues aggressively that more guns make the country safer. It relies on and staunchly defends a disputed interpretation of the Second Amendment to the US Constitution, which it argues gives US citizens the right to bear arms. Right? The NRA spends $250 million per year Far more than any of, uh, or uh, far more than all the gun countries' gun control advocacy groups uh, put together, um, and these are for political advocacy, advocacy of course. Uh, this money is for political advocacy. advocacy. The organisation has boosted, has boasted some high-profile members over the years, including George H. W. Bush. Um, Mr. Bush resigned from the group in '95 after Mr. Lapierre referred to federal agents in the wake of the Oklahoma City bombings as jackbooted thugs. Uh, in Texas, home of the Uvalde massacre, the NRA held its annual conference, and that was just a week after the Uvalde massacre. Uh, but, you know, you, you wouldn't be surprised. Ted Cruz, the Texas senator, uh, or a Texas senator, has received $442,000 from gun rights advocacy groups, and the majority of that comes from the NRA. Uh, there has been over there have been over four thousand deaths from gun crimes in Texas alone. Uh, so Cruz is resisting attempts to clamp down on gun ownership uh, federally, but also in in Texas. Um, and so you know that sort of spells out the power of of a of an interest group, right? The NRA has enormous political capital, enormous political clout. It is able to influence. Uh, politicians, in particular Republican politicians, and that's what it's banking on. It's banking on uh, the Republicans winning uh, the Senate or, or gaining ground at the, in the Senate, uh, and that in turn, and, and in future, uh, banking on a uh, the the president uh, moving from the Democrats to the Republicans. Um, so that's a that's a good example you could use as an interest group. I think you've got to have one example. I think from yours from the syllabus. And you can use the NRA as an example of that, of of uh, to to illustrate that. Okay, I am going to do another session. I think on Sunday it'll be a quick session, but I think I'm going to talk about uh, uh, some some broader aspects of of U.S. politics. If you have got, uh, if you want me to raise any specific issues that you find very difficult to find uh, to 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 uh, uh, to find uh, contemporary examples. Just drop me an email and I'll see if I can do that. Uh, but um, good luck to you in your exam and uh, I wish you all the best and I hope you found these videos useful.